this video, you'll learn how the timeline system works and to learn how to set it up on your preferred app. Check this link or this link. It's also in the description below. Okay, uh, it all starts with taking notes because our memories are not as good as most of us believe they are. And that's why I see note taking as the most important thing to do to have an efficient system. And that's why I always use note taking apps to also track my work because the information is there. All the notes, everything I need to do whatever it is I'm doing is there. At least that's how I see it. But the problem with note taking apps is that they were built to take notes. Some of them added new features, but the core thing is note taking. So I came up with a system that uses the structure of these apps to also make the note a status indicator. So where the note is indicates the status of that activity. That means that I have all the information I need to do and also the status. Am I doing it? Is this done? What's happening with this activity? And I also wanted it to be as simple as possible with less steps as possible with less friction as possible. And that's why it's a pretty simple and straightforward system. I don't claim to have found the perfect solution and I definitely don't think this will work for everyone, but I really like this. I, I love it. And maybe it's something that will also help you. So here's how it works. The system is based on what I call containers of information, which are spaces to keep everything related to the same topic. This can be something that you are learning, can be a project or your clients or even videos that you are producing. There are three types of containers. Let's start with the static containers. These are places for information that doesn't change a lot. A good example are your personal documents. You can have them in the same place. You need them, but you don't need them all the time, and they rarely change. It will only change if a document expires. Then there are the action containers. They exist for everything that is in progress. An example, clients that you are still working with can be inside action containers. Videos that you are producing can be inside action containers. A project you are working on can be inside an action container. So each one of these activities has its own action container and each static activity has its own static container. Finally, there is the timeline container. There's just one timeline container. So everything that is completed is moved to the timeline. So if I'm done with the client or with a project or with a video, I can move that note. We're talking about notes inside spaces. I can move that note to the timeline container. If a document expired, I can move that document to the timeline container and add the new valid document to that static container. However, the timeline container should not be confused with an archive. I believe everything we do is somehow related to things we did in the past. Moreover, many times we'll need information that we used in the past to do something right now in the present. So the timeline needs to be accessible. I need to be able to quickly find notes inside the timeline to simply check it, take a look at an information, or let's say a client wants more sessions with me, move that client back 
to its action container and start the process over. The hardest part, in my opinion, is when to create a container. For what should I create containers? I believe that everything that you are tracking needs an action container, and everything that you need quick access to needs a static container. There's no need to create static containers for information that you need once in a while. But things like personal documents, in my case, that I'm constantly looking for information about a number or anything related to the documents, I prefer to have it in a container. It's much easier, much faster to go to that container when compared to performing a search. Back to the action containers. When a project, when something that you are tracking with action containers is completed, you can simply move all the nodes to the timeline and delete that container. Think about all the activities in progress in your life and create action containers for each one of them. And also think about any information that you are constantly reaching for, looking for, and create static containers for them. The static containers exist to prevent you from wasting time looking for an information that you're constantly needing, okay? Now, once you have all these containers, you can completely skip the inbox. You can add the information to the container. There's no need to create an inbox. Everything that you are working on and every information that you keep with you to help you do your work is already there. Just go to the specific container and save the information there. Look for the node and save the information there. If it's a new client, just create a new node inside the client's container. If it's a new video, just create a new video inside the video's container, the YouTube container, whatever you call it. On top of all that, although all these apps started as note-taking apps, many of them added other features, for example, tasks. So the same is true if you need to add some actions to the actions container notes. For example, you want to remember to, I don't know, research something that a client asked you just go to the client's container, look for the client note, and add the task to that note, to the client's note. If you have an insight for the video, you can go to that video and add more information, maybe a picture or something else to that note related to that video. Another thing that many of these apps have is an indicator of how many nodes we have inside a container. For example, you can set Evernote to show you how many nodes you have in a notebook. Uh, Obsidian has a plugin that shows me how many nodes I have inside a folder, and so on. So this number will give you the information that you need about how many activities you are working, you're currently working on. So Looking at the number, you'll know how many of them you need to still pay attention because when you're done with that activity, remember, you will move that note to the timeline. Like I mentioned before, the timeline is a place that you can also see as a space for resources, information that you might need in the future. But you have to be able to find that information. And each system, each app, has ways to let us filter that information, find that information quickly. For example, Evernote has tags. The Supernote also has tags. Uh, Obsidian has tags and also properties. You see how this works in the specific videos, but for now, keep in mind that you have to add this information to each node when they are inside the static containers or in the action containers so that when you move them to the timeline, you'll be able to quickly find them. Also, 
It's called timeline because it's order in reverse chronological order. The newest notes moved there are at the top of the list. And this will help us find information that we just moved to the timeline because it's likely that we'll need that information uh, during the next hours or few days. So all I have to do is open the timeline and look at the top of the list to find that information, to check something or to move it back to an action container or maybe even to a static container. Finally, I like to have this space that works as a dashboard. It will contain information about, uh, of course, the action containers, information about some of the static containers, uh, dates, tasks, and many other things that help us do our work. And Evernote has a space for this called Evernote Home. There's many ways to create these dashboards on Obsidian. There's also ways to create them on Screentool, on the Supernode, and so on. So let's do a quick recap here. There are three types of containers. Let's start with the action containers. It's where you add notes for everything you, that you're working on, or add information to a note that is already there. Then there are the static containers. This will be places to keep all the information that you need more often than not. An example are personal documents. In both cases, when something is done, done meaning I'm finished working with a client or let's say a document expired, I'll move that to the timeline, which means that I'll be doing two things at the same time. First, when I move that node to the timeline, I'm preserving that information for the future. I can easily find that information in the future. But by doing that, the system is now telling me that I have one less work to do inside that action container. And this is what I, what I try to do everywhere in the system. When I do something, I want information. I want that to give me some information and I want to do something that will make many things happen. And finally, there is the dashboard. Think of it as your desk. What do you have on top of your desk? Isn't that a huge shortcut space? Things that you are reaching out all the time, a uh, mobile phone charger, pens, pencils, notebooks, your phone, everything that you are constantly needing to do your work, or at least needing most of the time you keep close to you on your desk. So imagine that the dashboard is something similar to that, but a virtual desk. Maybe you can have all your uh, action containers, a uh, calendar, a list of tasks, whatever it is that can help you have this uh, dashboard information, information from a dashboard right in front of you. Okay, but enough with theory. This is <laughs> a lot of explanation for a single video. So let's try to do this, to make this work on all the apps that I use most of the time. And we'll start with Evernote. You can find a list of the other ones in the description below and also on my website. Thanks for watching. See you soon.